Um, it is very, very important to, to, to realize that uh, they pick everything that they see in us. And out there, they see a lot of things, engage with a lot of people, engage with a lot of uh, content. We are in the communication age right now. There's too much information. You will gather them at home, they will go out there, they will meet something else. So how do they uh, work with that when, when they meet it, all right? But I want us to focus on a very specific um, line of, um, the, uh, of the wet paint. And I, I, will, I choose to call it the, the battle ground or the battle lines, all right? So what battles do our children go through, especially at a time like this in this kind of generation we i'm glad that last week you sorry last month you had uh, dr mkolwe before we got our firstborn we had a class with him and i'm glad that we we did that class uh, with him it gave us quite a bit of um, you know grounding even as we we started raising our children thank god that it's it's you look back and you say i'm glad i did so later on, we now became um, students. So right now, so we went through trainings with him. So currently, we've also just started, um, you know, helping others and, and working with them in the same same um, um, process. So we are also teachers right now. And every time you teach, you actually get to discover that uh, you're teaching yourself. You rem it's a reminder every time because the journey of parenting is, is, is a journey of learning day in, day out. So glad that we can be able to do that. So, so that's uh, our engagement today. We'll want to make it um, as brief as we can so that we are able to get time to do, you know, how to open it up for questions. So overcoming um, the battle, all right? Overcoming the battle, I love this. Um, these verses. Um, moment. So Proverbs, uh, Proverbs chapter um, four, verse ten to twelve. Oh, sorry, there's an icon. I want to minimize that. It's okay now. So Proverbs chapter 4, verse 10 to 12, the Bible says, Hear my son and receive my sayings, and the years of your life will be many. I have taught you in the way of wisdom. I have led you <clears throat> in the right paths. And this is Solomon speaking, you know. And um, he keeps imploring uh, his son and says, Listen, my son. And this, of course, comes to us at a time like this. As a father, these, these are words that you speak to your son. As a, um, you know, a parent, these, these are words you speak to your children. You know, Receive my sayings and the years of your life will be many. All of us desire that um, our children will live long and not just live long, but those will be long, fruitful years and not just uh, you know, fruitfulness. It will be fruitfulness that will you know be consistent and make meaning not just in their lives but in the lives of many others so solomon says i have taught you in the way of wisdom i have led you in the right paths ideally saying my son the wisdom i've given you the paths have led you uh, you know may you walk in those uh, things that i've i've said to you all the days of your life uh, that you will live lo a long life and even in that long life, you will see God exalted in your life, all right? So, so this is a reminder to us as parents um, that yes, we desire our children to live long. We desire that they will walk in the wisdom. We desire that they will grow to be children who will, you know, um, be, be people that we, others can sit and say, look at what God has done through this child, through this person. Right. So for us, there is wisdom that we need to impart. We need to lead them in the right paths so that this can happen. We can reflect and say this has happened. Allow me to just mention that we are at war. Ladies and gentlemen, we are at war, especially at a time like this. At the spoils for the war are the hearts and the minds of our children. 
yeah, the hearts and the minds of our children. And the devil is very, you know, he's very intentional at a point like this to make sure that um, that um, their minds, their hearts, you know, are lost and distorted. That's the kind of war we are in. Yes, yeah, so the battle lines are very clear. And, and, and for us today, let's just discuss these three. I think these three are very key. Um, the battle of self-worth, the battle of perspective, so, sorry, four of them, the battle of character, the battle of values. Okay, so um, your children are actually crying for a lot of help. They are looking for someone to help them. They're looking for a protector. They're looking for a guide. And, and the world is actually competing against all this. The world is saying, no, 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 no. We will not allow you to be the greatest helper in their life, the protector, the guide in their lives. Now the world wants to give them something totally different that will bring destruction to their lives. Allow me to just welcome my wife. Yeah, to say hi. Um, then we can continue. Um, let me stop sharing. All right. Can you see us? Yes, we can see you. We can't see ourselves. <laughs> yes, we can see you. Uh, I need to see myself so that I know if she's out of them. Uh, all right. Okay, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, there's, there's a place if you click on the three dots that you give you hide hide selfie or uh, not hide. Have you seen it? Just go on the three dots, and then uh, just under the one that says hard nine individual participants. Below it, you enable uh, you to not to hide. Uh, yeah. Bad. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thank you for that. Um, so this is my wife. I'll, I'll just allow her to say hi, then we can continue from there. Hi, everybody. Hi. Good to be here. Karibu sana. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so great. So uh, let me, uh, there's a part she will do as we continue. Let me continue sharing. Um, so, so we are saying um, that the role is to make our children walk in the way of wisdom, right? That's, that's our desire, that they walk in the way of wisdom. Uh, and so we have a very important role to, you know, to be the helper. As much as we want. Uh, with them. So, all of us desire that we will have a child who is both fruitful but also fulfilled before God and before man. So, these are totally different you know, areas. So, your child needs to be fruitful in uh, your, your, volume, your volume is a bit low. Okay. Yeah, maybe you move closer. <laughs> I need to move closer. Thank you. How is that? Is that better? Yeah, that's okay. That's fine. All right. Okay. All right. So, so, so we decided that our children will be um, but not just fruitful, but they will also be fruitful before God and before man. Um, that's um, what we desire. So it's a, it's, it's a beard again. Oh, it disappeared again. 
Yes. The body? Yeah, I think maybe the, the gadget you're using is a bit far from you. Maybe move it closer. Close to the speaker. Uh, let me do that. Let me let me uh, sorry for that. All right. Let me just end this one. So give us a minute, just one minute. Um, is is that audio better? Yeah, that's very clear, very clear. Thank you. Uh, uh, Douglas, you're saying it's better this one? Yes, it's very clear. All right. All right, thank you. I'm just wondering if I'm able to screen share with a different channel. Let's see. Uh, that's okay. Good. Yes. You can you can see it? Yes, yes. Thank you. All right, and the audio is clear now? Very clear, thank you. All right, great. So I, I guess I'm, I'm doing one gadget is screen sharing, the other one is uh, is uh, doing the audio. So I guess we can... Just one moment. All right. Um, I think now that's also very clear for us. Great. So, Pauline, sorry, sorry about that. I guess now we will we can continue. Well, so we are saying. Um, even as we think about the battle that our children are going through, we want to be at a place where we can make our children, or help them explore their gifts and talents, as also live independently. 
from us as parents and also you know to be in obedience of god's god's revealed well many of us parents sometimes want our children to be dependent all right or rather to and to walk walk when a sisi kabisa all the time but we uh, the desire is to make to make them be independent if we send our children out of town that they can stand on their own you know they can use their gifting their talents to make meaning in their own lives uh, and that's the desire um, but remember again we are saying we are to let me just say a few uh, principles um and these are just key, key principles be, before we look at some of those things that are, are are very key in terms of how to fight the battles all right so the, we have two kinds of children even as you think about what you will have tomorrow we have those who are great achievers meaning they are fruitful but now um some of those are not fulfilled uh, meaning um yes they are doing great things out there they are delivering the results they, you know when you look at uh, the bottom line it's making a lot of sense and out there people are cheering and saying you're successful but deep down they're not fulfilled there's something they miss and we'll look at that others on the other hand are very fulfilled but they are not fulfilled so you want a child who is both fulfilled but also fruitful they are you know doing work out there they are creating value they are being celebrated but deep down they have a great fulfillment and the best fulfillment uh for them is to have such a relationship with god and walking with god that's a good combination of the kind of child you want uh to have so for you as a parent of course you need to know their strengths you need to know you need to be very careful uh, and this is something that we have had issues with as parents you want your child to you want your child to live your life yeah <laughs> through you right send you i was supposed to be a scientist <laughs> uh a wood scientist is <laughs> i mean there's a course like that but because i didn't manage to be that kind of a scientist my child has to be like that i wanted to be an engineer um but i didn't manage to be an engineer so i want my children to live my life through me which is very very sad we need to allow them to you know to live their lives and to to be who they are so you have to support your children you have to and one of the biggest support is to make sure that your child is independent create the child's independence from you you know run away from any temptation of wanting to spy on your children all the time <laughs> you have you have uh, your children have grown they are teenagers they are becoming you know young adults but you want to keep spying may god help us that um we will feel very safe when they are away and will not be you know looking for where they are but that begins with a good foundation that is the key um to to all that all right um yeah so all right so i i mentioned um the battle um these are four things that we need to really think about and my my wife will chip in um self image um and this is a big one right especially in this generation you step out there and um people just project a totally different image of yourself if your child has not found the value of knowing their identity then this is a point where they lose their self image think about the story of moses Moses has been raised in the palace right i think he had everything uh he needed in the palace he had the confidence and that's why even by the time he's uh, doing the murder you know he 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 had a certain level of confidence mm-hmm. even in his identity 
But later on, he wanders in the wilderness. And when the voice comes, when, when the call comes, and um, he's told, I need to send you back to Egypt. Look at what he says in Exodus 4, 10 to 11. Please, Lord, I have never been eloquent, neither recently nor in time past, for I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. So this is someone who has lost confidence. Their self-image is no longer there. But he was not speaking the truth because in Acts 7.22, the Bible says, Moses is, I mean, or rather the Bible describes Moses by Stephen as powerful in speech and action. So there's something that was lost. And we believe that the wilderness experience made him lose something. And so our children go out there, they meet things, they meet people, they meet content, they meet, you know, the world. And the world, you know, pushes things that can destroy their self-image. So may God help us to guard. But also, you need to ask yourself, um, even as a person, um, how is your self-image? <laughs> even you as a parent. Is there something you can sell to your children? Is it something you can sell to your children? Or are you, <laughs> uh, do your children look at you and they think, oh my goodness, my, my father, my mother, they have no identity. So that needs to begin with us. Mm -hmm. If we have the self-image, remember, they pick what they see. They pick what they hear, right? But mostly what they see. So that's weight paint, weight paint right there. If you have no self-image, that's exactly what they'll pick. And that's what they'll walk out there with, all right? Um, <laughs> yeah, so we'll also just desire to, if, if someone needs to, you know, say something engaged, it's, it's allowed, yeah? that it's not just us uh, talking and talking and talking. All right, there's um, uh, something else here um, about self-image. I think we've mentioned this. Uh, Moses clearly had a very poor, low self-image. And um, look at what this line says. Moses' view of himself was lower than the Lord's view of him, you know? And uh, the Lord wants you and our children to believe that uh, we are incompetent, we are not smart, we are good for nothing. In fact, the world wants to believe that we are a biological <laughs> accident. But the Lord declares in his word that we are fully, fearfully and wonderfully made. And uh, God does not make junk. I don't know if uh, any one of us believes they are junk, but God does not make junk. Um, I'll allow my wife to just do the next um, item on perspective as we as we continue. All right. Um, I think I like what you're saying that um, we start with the right self image, like Moses did. Then at some point he lost perspective. And uh, Sophia Wairimo, we see you when you say it's true that independence for our children is very key. That way we are not teaching them to be dependent on us, but really to be able to sur not survive, to thrive, mm -hmm. not survive, to thrive even when we are not there. That that really is our responsibility. The same way God has entrusted us with everything that he's given us and he's allowed us to live our lives. Is the same way we need to allow our children to live their lives. So the second thing I think we uh, we are looking at is the right perspective. We'd really want our children to know how to find the right perspective of everything, the right view of life, the right view, uh, their thought process, you know. Um, Elijah in the Bible is a very good example. He really knew what to do, and he had just won a very big uh, battle, but fear and, and discouragement made him to lose perspective just because one Queen Jezebel mm. <laughs> threatened him and that was it. He was already asking God, can I please die? 
like the same same person who has just uh, won a very big battle of uh, and okay. he had just uh, killed some killed the prophets now he can com- he has completely forgotten that and he's all of a sudden asking god please please can i die and we don't want our children in that place where they totally lose um even the 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 they totally miss out on the victories that they've already had and that discouragement completely wipes out and uh, makes them lose perspective so we really want our children to look at life from god's vantage point all the time that they will always remember who they are one uh, like uh, my husband has rightly put it on their self image and number two see things from god's point of view if that can be achieved i think that would be a really big success for them where they can see god they can see things from god's perspective so another thing very important is their character and this is i don't know how i don't know how well we can put it but these are things that i think um the world today wants to make look weak if you're humble if you're meek if you're not pushy and arrogant and not speaking your mind you know because everyone is speaking their minds and sometimes your mind may be a bit empty but you prefer to share it anyway the world is teaching us to express ourselves just the way we just with our opinion whether it's vetted whether it's valid whether it's correct you say it's my opinion so and there's a lot of pride and a lot of competition but the competition is really in our ignorance and our foolishness so we are trying to show off how foolish or how ignorant we are and the world is celebrating that and so values like humility and meekness then become a an old fashioned way of looking at life but we would want our children to grow up with the values that really build them up as children of god and the two of them that really stand out would be humility and meekness mm-hmm. and humility is not having a low view of yourself humility would be having the view that god has of you of yourself now like anthony rightly put is that our view is that as parents speaking for myself and even for as you think about it what is your how do you carry yourself do you carry yourself with humility as a parent are you rude to your children are we are, do we show them do we walk in pride how do our children see us handling traffic of <laughs> how do we treat someone border trying border to thing. yeah a border border man wants to you know yeah. come ahead of, of your car and you're the first one pastor pastor anthony for example <laughs> shouting. <laughs> shouting at the top of his voice and say who do you think you are go to hell you know it's very sad that sometimes we behave with pride and arrogance and then we tell our children to behave in humility monkey see monkey do so the children really need to see us building our own character and when we read scriptures with them it challenges us and challenges them and we look at that just in a moment about our spirituality so if you have any comment or questions we'd really appreciate Geoffrey says uh, yes Geoffrey and the image you put on becomes a way to paint to them so we must put on the right self image to enable them to remain up and, and confident. be confident as well all right we must have missed a comment i think uh, you've said that like the part of self image i want to believe this is what makes our children amen 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 i pray that is our children will really uh will really be an image of god like we will we will raise them to really show who jesus really is especially in this world that is really hungry for god that's right and then just the other the fourth one is is values you know so remember if we have the wrong values um we will definitely be pursuing the wrong courses and we have many of us <laughs> you know pursuing the wrong course why because ideally we have the wrong values we could not input in us first and then to our children you know the right uh, values so we keep pursuing the wrong things day in day out just because the foundation 
is not uh, right. And, and as a parent, it's very important, you know, just to work with your child to teach them. And our basis of the right value should be God's, God's word. Ideally, that's it. That's that's where we have everything we need in terms of the values. Yeah. Today, everything seems to be relative. Mm -hmm. Everything, you including know, our including our <laughs> social. Including, I'm told right now we have. 82, 7, 72, genders. So as when we're growing up, we knew two genders, right? And male, female. But now everything just keeps getting fuzzy and, and, you know, you don't know what is right, you don't know what is wrong. In fact, when you speak against some of those things, you are the one who is, um, um, what is it called? Demon. You are the one who is demonized. Uh, they are wondering why are you becoming homophobic, for example? Mm -hmm. Yeah, why are you judging other people? So everything is becoming relative. So we need to sit down with our children, we need to teach them the right values, and these right values will definitely be uh, aligned to God's word. All right, so it doesn't matter what the and 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 this question comes in. You know, time and time again, what happens if they, uh, my children go out there and they mix, you know, the things that we keep talking about, you know, the wrong values, how do they deal with them? Yeah. We have a role. And once the right foundations are made, it will be, it will be for them to go out there and to see. And that's what we are exactly training them, right? So um, I think, um, so those four things, self-image, Perspective. Perspective, character. character, values. May God help us to uh, input the right self-image, perspective, character, and values um, in our children. Right. So, so we have this, and and this um, is probably what I'll today I'll call the the real wet paint. Paint. All right. <laughs> The order of priorities that the world gives. And um, it is so interesting that for our children, think about your preteen, think about your teenager. When they go out there, the world tells them number one is looks. My looks. My looks. And they are called Luku, Luku Master. Yeah? So looks come high priority, it's been, it's been prioritized very high. Social popularity, you know, those who are um, socially very popular are celebrated. Those who have great looks and looks could be physical, mm -hmm. but as well as, you know, what they put on. Mm -hmm. So that's fashion, celebrated. It keeps, you know, and now if your child is athletic, they're sporty or they have great music ability, that is also really highly celebrated. Uh, scholastic ability was uh, high some time back. Nowadays, uh, <laughs> it's no cares. longer, who cares? You with your A's, uh, we don't care. Uh, looks actually come higher than that. Then finally, and unfortunately, family ties come at the bottom of, you know, that pyramid. Let's, let's call it a pyramid. It comes at the bottom of that, of that pyramid. So if you have um, a family that is well need that loves God, that goes there, does devotion every morning, that prays together, mm -hmm. that goes for missions, you know, that um, attends church. You know, when guys meet in school on Monday, so they ask each other, hey, so how was your weekend? Nee, 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 nee. So when you tell your friends, ah, as we went to church, we... <laughs> We had a fellowship. Our parents had a fellowship. They, they have a meeting they do every month. So we, we accompanied them. The guys are just thinking, oh my God, where do you live? So that has, has been, you know, it's, it's the least things that are valued in our society today. Uh, now, this needs to change, you know, and may it be a desire for you to turn around this so that Family ties become one of the most celebrated, you know, scholastic ability, athletic music ability. So they, so this order needs to change and, and turn around to come to the, you know, to the other side. And, 
and, and I believe that that's that will be our desire. So, how do we reverse this world's order of priorities? I'll, this is just a reminder to all of us. If left unattended, our children will be destroyed by this this list of priorities. Mm -hmm. So, if if our focus becomes looks and social popularity, you know, and other kinds of ability giftings, then um, that's where destruction comes because we have neglected the, the most important. So our children will be constantly under pressure. They have to look the best. And so their identity then becomes attached to those things, mm -hmm. to their looks, to their abilities, you know, to their social popularity. And um, it's worsened um, when the parent is not there to give guidance. So the parent has to be there to give guidance. Um, Allow me to. Yes, please go ahead. Um, I, I think you, what you're saying is very, very true. And uh, I don't know, I've just thought about the instances and maybe we can just chat anything, any reason you've ever had of a, a child or an early teen or a teen, any reason they committed suicide. You can just comment on the chat. I think usually during KCPE and KCSE results, we've seen a few children um, commit suicide because of their scholastic ability. Mm. Just go, let's go back. Yeah. yeah, because they're not they're not doing well in school. Though that is, I think, not not a very big um, challenge. Now, but a lot of people are suffering depression. A lot of children, let me put it like that, or young teens could be suffering because of lack of uh, popularity. Yeah. And think about social media. Yeah. yeah. And social media is just confirming that you're not popular. You don't yeah. have enough likes and mm -hmm. that means we don't like you. I don't know. You can just share with us. Most Nation. of the people, Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Diana, you say lack of affirmation and concern from the parents, for sure, for sure, for sure. Most of it is social popularity, right? Yeah, which is something you can't go to the shop and buy. Like, <laughs> people decide whether they like you or they don't. So you can imagine if that's what you're basing your life on, and then you actually confirm that, um, you confirm that you're not as popular as you thought you would be. And then you change your hair color and no one cares. You change your looks, no one cares. You change your words. And so it's very sad. So I was just backing you up to say, those are not the things that we need to have our children peg their lives on because I am sure even Mwalimu here, uh, Sarah is actually saying the truth that in school, they see a lot of challenges with the children and how they behave. But parents decide to protect the child and don't want the teacher to interfere at all, which really turns things around. For the parent, if we don't look out, what we are saying, if it's left unattended, our children will really get lost because the looks change. Today you're told you look nice in dreadlocks. Tomorrow you're told you look nice when you're bald. Tomorrow you're told change your hair color. So it's never really yeah. a constant. It's fluid. Yeah, it's fluid. That's yeah, all right. It's, it's changing fluid. every time. So may God help us, like we are saying, to reshuffle you know the list of priorities um but we we have to be involved we we cannot leave this to someone else to do mm -hmm. we have to be involved we have to work with our children we have to train them we have to discipline them we have to be with them every other time all right and just to emphasize the perspective um that are being portrayed in the bible remember we said god's word is our basis and uh, our guide each and every time. So let me just mention this for these are very, very important, even as we think about how do we change those perspectives. These are just summary. You know, we, we can go on and on and on and on. So please, as a parent, do not sacrifice your relationship with your child for the drive to succeed. Um, I know we want money. We talk about an economy that is collapsing, or rather tough economic times, but there are things that are more valuable than um, the money that we run to, to get. 
out there. And we've seen situations where someone has been running the entire lifetime looking for money, yet that money now is used to take your children to rehab, mm. you know, and to hospitals and, and, you know, to all the time going to jail and, and doing bail and all that. So let's not tra- sacrifice our relationship with our children for the drive to succeed. We need to be keen on developing a deep but a very vibrant relationship with our children. That is very, and there are many ways, you know, Mm. we can be able to do that. But think about quality, but quantity Mm. as well. Mm. We cannot just say, I have a very short time, I'll give them quality. They, especially the younger ones, quantity means everything. Mm. That's their language Mm. of uh, love. Quantity means everything, all right? And again, like we mentioned earlier, um, allow your child to be successful. Don't relieve your life through them, all right? But allow them to, to, to pursue their own success and grow in their own success. And then, um, of course, the fourth one, there are many more that we can, we can talk about. Um, create memories, right? Create memories at home. Um, that they, your children will never forget. This is this also just pegs with what we're talking about, number two, that every time you create memories, you are creating an, a deep relationship with them. Let them always desire to come home, even when they are elsewhere. They'll know home is where there is love. Mm-hmm. Home is where, you know, there's genuine and true love. That's mm-hmm. where um, success is. That's where discipline is, all right? Yes, all right all right eh. wow quite a number of comments yeah we have seen these comments and just it's amazing yeah. we i think we just all saying the same things yeah yeah in different uh, languages we have um probably as we just head to the to the end of this there's uh yeah someone says sarah Sarah Kumu says, comparing your children to your sisters and friends' kids. <laughs> this is enough to make your child wish um, sorry, sorry, sorry. Mm-hmm. wish for death. True. It's so true. Yeah. I mean, because they'll never measure up. I mean, they say there's always a taller person than you. So, there's always someone who's taller. There's always someone who's shorter. There's always someone who's darker. There's always someone who's lighter. So if you're trying to make your child you know, uh, be like your sister's children or your kids, your friend's children. It will never happen and your child will lose their identity. Thank you, Sarah. Esther, what you're saying, that the emphasis should be more of what really defines a person. I think we are getting it because as parents, if we can get that definition right, then our children can also get it. Uh Aha, Masinde, you're saying everything is all about my life. (laughs) Mm, (laughs) My right. And sincerely speaking, we teachers are going through a lot in our schools. I We totally agree. I mean, it's becoming increasingly difficult. Gone are the days that teacher would say and uh, it would be low. Nowadays, it's parents fighting teachers and teachers muting. (laughs) And it was a collaboration. Yeah. Parent collaborates with the teacher. teacher and so on yeah so yeah. thank you for your your comments we couldn't agree more all right so we'll just do the the few last slides um <laughs> then i think we can we can open it up there is a, a very important spiritual perspective to this okay let's go ahead all right are we still there even a thumbs up you know, a smiley something. (laughs) We are there. Good, good, good. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Thank you very much. All right. So um, how do we then build those four things? I think um, Anthony has brought it home. Uh, What did we say? The values, the perspective, perspective. the self-image, and the character. Like how practical can we be in building, especially with our children who are, who are younger, and some of us may even have older children. It doesn't matter wherever we start, as long as we get started or we continue with what God has been doing. God has been doing with us. So 
Deuteronomy, um, no, there's the verse that um, you shared with us, even as we were preparing for this, Psalm 112, verse 1 to 3. If you can find it somewhere, somewhere. Psalm 112, 1 to 3. Okay, uh, it says, praise Praise the Lord, blessed are those who fear the Lord, who will find who find great delight in his commands. Their children will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. And that wealth and riches, who doesn't want that, <laughs> are in their houses and their righteousness endures forever. That sounds like a promise, and I believe it is a promise. However, it is not automatic. It is not automatic. So why does the Bible include the part of blessed are those who fear the Lord? And that ties up with another scripture that is Deuteronomy 11, 18 and 19. Deuteronomy 11, 18 and 19. Where the Bible talks about Do we look for thou west thou? <laughs> okay. Sorry, I'm using my phone. So the Bible says, therefore you shall lay up these words of mine in your heart and your soul and in your soul, bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall teach them to your children, speaking of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. Okay. So what do we then mean by putting those two verses together? That there's a promise that is in Psalm 112, especially verse two and three, that talks about our children being mighty in the land and it talks about bless, um, wealth and riches and all that. And we don't, we don't mind any of those. I mean, it would be a pleasure. But the Bible is saying that the first thing we need to do first is our, us as parents, first need to have a right relationship with God. And how do we do that? We do that by what Deuteronomy 11, 18 is talking about, laying up the words of God in our own hearts and in our souls and binding them on our hands and even between our eyes. So we have to have the right relationship first because remember we are models. I mean, super models. <laughs> So if we are size eight, we are all size eight. If we are plus size, we are plus size models. So that's what I mean. The children are watching our every move. Yeah, we think some of them are too young to see. Guess what? They see, they hear. So they know whether our relationship with God is wanting. They even know whether we even care about God in the first place. Because maybe as soon as we leave church, all we do is complain in the car the whole time about God or about church, about children, all that. So we need to have a right relationship with God. So parenting is really about, not about doing, but about being. Once we are the right people, then we will do the right things. But when we are trying to do the right things, but we are not being the right person, then our children struggle with what to follow. And chances are high, they follow what is wrong, which is not a good idea. So how do we build a spiritual foundation? From get-go, what kind of music? Do we play in our homes? Do we sing along in our homes? Some of us just allow whichever music, you know, to run. But the Bible says that we need to minister to each other through psalms and, and hymns and spiritual songs. That's what the Bible says. So if we can make it a culture to be worshiping in our homes, to make our homes a place of worship, a place of singing hymns and uh, beautiful music before the Lord, that is building a foundation. We should also pray for our with our children. We should memorize scripture. And that's not just for the children, for us. Because when we make it look like it's a child's thing, so we tell them, Haya, go and say the verse. If children, if your children are those ones for my right, your right, they will of, of course ask you, how about you, Sarah? Can you really say the verse? Then you're like, eh, you'll see a mommy. <laughs> so our children need to hear you say Ephesians chapter Six verse one says this, so that they see us memorizing scripture just like them. We should read the word of God to them, read with them, and it's from infancy. Infancy. We need to read the word of God with them as much as possible, and not just the Bible stories. 
the heroic ones. No, we should read the actual, the raw word of God with our children. They understand God's word because it has revelation. And then we need to, as they grow, deepen their knowledge of scripture. Let your child know about salvation in their home. Let them know about uh, being filled with the Holy Spirit. Let them ask those questions at home. Let's not assume that all this will be done at Sunday school, so it's not our business. No, God had it in such a way that we were to teach our children first, even before the world or anyone else gets to teach them. Even teachers in school are not mandated to teach our children scripture more than ourselves. So as they grow up, they'll have questions and ask, uh, Daddy, why is Uncle so-and-so not uh, going to church? You know, or the last, eh, see, eh, auntie so-and-so drinks alcohol or something. Those are the questions that will come because as you, ask, as you teach them the word of God, they'll begin to ask the right questions. So let's answer the questions as honestly, as openly as possible, directing them back to what the word of God says. Mm -hmm. And of course, as much as possible, avoid teaching them to feel more holy than the rest, but try and teach them the truth all the same. And then our modeling, let them see you read your own Bible. Let them see you giving. Let them see you serving at church. Let it not be a story you tell. So how do we do that? We just make sure we do consistent sharing of God's word with them and demonstrating and living it out in our own lives. Okay. All right. So as we bring this to an end, I mean, thanks, Neno. Um, we have to take charge um, spiritually at home. Very, very important, all right? So remember, um, it will be good to remind ourselves that we said as we began that we are at war. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Satan's goal, of course, is not good for you as a parent, <laughs> but also for your child. If he destroys you, he also destroys your child. So you can use a parent, okay? He can use a child, mm -hmm. he can use a world, he can use a society, oh, no. he can use all these things. And for the parent, of course, if you don't pay attention to God's word, instruction, teaching, discipline, discipline your children, you are busy doing other things that, uh, yes, they make sense, but then you neglect your children, especially in instruction, teaching, and disciplining then right in there, there is a door for the devil to come in. And you know, using the child who uh, ignores the guidance and it is, that he receives. But Im imagine if you don't give, the child even does not have anything to ignore. <laughs> yeah, Because he's not working with anything. This child is receiving everything from people out there, including your, your house manager. Remember, your house manager is a what? He's a passerby. That's true. Mm -hmm. You need to find time. You they, they, they stay with your children for so many hours. You need to create time for your children as well. Don't allow them to, to take charge and, and do everything, all right? You can use the world, the worries of the world, you know, the deceitfulness of uh, um, wealth, the desire for other things which choke the word of God and uh, they make us unproductive, all right? You and them, and I and the children. And society, uh, you know, influence of bad company, um, that can also be used to, to bring uh, death and destruction. So you play your part, watch God transform the life of your child. You have a very, very important part to play as a parent. So think about those four things, self-image, um, character, what else? Uh -huh. Self-image, character, uh, values. values, perspective. Yes. And may God help us to change the order of priority uh -huh. that family ties will be top Mm -hmm. Scholar, scho scholarly ability, Scholar. scholastic ability will, will come next, you know. Uh, that social <laughs> popularity will be least. Your children will not even be very keen um, about that. Whether they are affirmed or not, 
they know that they are loved and that God loves them as well. All right. I think we will um, um, pause there. I don't know if uh, we have a few more minutes. Um, Douglas. Carry yeah, on. we still have a few minutes to go. Thank you so much. Uh, then DM us. Not an alarm, not much. It has been very simple and very um, powerful, transformative, and easy to understand. I've been able to pick a lot of pointers uh, from what you've been able to speak. And um, knowing that Tunongana was as the upper, it's been easy for them to understand. I've been able to see what, like you said, how this value, the, the part of the value is, um, it's a weight paint. So the values I establish in the family or that I, what I value as a parent, it transmitted to my child automatically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in, in most times people say that values are caught, they're not short. And uh, we've been looking for many things that probably are affecting our children, like maybe the, uh, the people around them, but our values, like you talk about the values, you talk about um, the image that even I portray as a person, even as a father or as a, as a mother, what image am I portraying even concerning Christ? Because if I portray Christ in a negative way, if I'm always complaining, even about a pastor or a man of God, uh, it's an image that I'm going to pick up. And this will be very hard for me to really speak to them or maybe encourage them to go to church because already the image that are portrayed in our kick off for a module. And so I think those are the things that we need to really um, look at. Like the character, someone said, um, uh, where, what is, where is the place of politics and um, um, as a paint also? I, I saw someone asking, and is it a paint? Because sometimes even the way you talk about politics in our houses, um, especially the few days of Mandamano, it also becomes a pain. <laughs> we, we are portraying this person becoming better than the other person. I've seen this even in my house, or by, because of the information around gather about one individual, this kid will live knowing that uh, or now because they know this person is coming from a real community, they say that why are we behaving like this? And see, there's a pain to them. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> it's very important that you understand which paint are we having around us. Is it a white paint? Is it a black paint? And maybe maybe I can ask this also, maybe to the endemas, and then I'll allow maybe interaction. Maybe you can give two or three questions from the uh, uh, audience. Um, where is the place of parties uh, or gatherings or family hangouts? in the life on the growth of a child, especially if I go out for a hangout with uh, friends. Uh, maybe I'm not born again, or oh, I'm born again, but uh, the friends are not born again. So we are taking a machoma and then now uh, we top it up with some drinks and the hard drinks and then we tell kids go and play in the bouncing castle. But we stay here with our drinks, with our tuskers and eating a machoma. And we tell them that alcohol is harmful to your health. <laughs> <laughs> oh and then when they reach the age of 18, we see them in the same same cans in their rooms. And we're like, you're not supposed to take alcohol. And we forget that there's a model we did. And I think, I think um, 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 uh, your, your wife mentioned something about we, it's not about what we say, but what we be, what we are. Is that place of maybe this joints also becoming a page? Maybe you can respond to that and then you can maybe hear two or three questions from the audience. Okay, thanks. Um, yes. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I think that's a very profound question. And um, <laughs> they say if you take a glass of wine, your child may easily become a drunkard. So for you, it's it's uh, you're trying to just do it in moderation. But because the Bible says when the child is young, they are a slave until they become mature. That's when they can make a decision. 
you know, that's when even God says that they can have their inheritance because when a child is immature, then they are slaves. And what that then means is when we introduce our children to values that, um, that are against God's word, they take that to be the gospel truth. So then they believe that's the way things should be done. So they believe that when you're a child in a home that uh, especially the dad or mom is not Christian or is not a believer of, of Jesus Christ, we only do the things that small children do, like memorize scripture, like, you know, but we look forward to growing up so that we start doing the right things, the right things like daddy or like mommy. So if daddy is drinking, let's just do this church thing for now. But as soon as we grow up, we want to be like daddy. So we are very unfair to our children by exposing them to the choices we have made and not allowing them to know the truth and to choose the truth for themselves. So we, we paint the wrong picture or we paint, we actually paint the wall and then we make sure when it's very wet, they put their little hands and that is the picture they forever have in their hearts or minds that that's how things are done. So that's why a lot of the children now are very lost because we, they grew up being told, don't do it, but they saw daddy or mommy do it. The other bit I think you've spoken is a part for parties, um, gatherings. And I know Anthony is just about to comment on that, but uh, what I would want to say about that is, it is very important for you as a parent to also be a policeman, especially when your child is younger. Be the keeper of that gate. Like make sure wherever they're going to be involved, it is something that you're 100% comfortable. So either go with them, especially for family gatherings, if you're not comfortable, so that you can make a decision of when to leave or when to stop. But most of all, try your level best to not expose them too early to evil because that will be their normal. So that's how come children are getting addicted in pornography and all that because they are being exposed to it very early when they're still slaves. Mm -hmm. So they don't know how to make better choices because that is the, the thing that they were exposed to. So throw the party in your house if you have to. <laughs> you mm -hmm. can throw the party back to your in your house so that you can monitor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but by all means, be be a keeper of that gate. All right. Um, I think it's um, so. So I need to give you back the host um, rights. So, so as you continue, let me let me just mention this. Um, I, I like the point of your child is a slave, all right? But beyond that, remember that, um, I mean, this is just an additional point to, to what Neno has said. Your children need to, when, you know, when people go out for parties, a lot of things happen. Mm -hmm. A lot of things you you get to meet people. People let loose. Mm. <laughs> Self control is a uh, and you know bit by bit as the as the evening gets deeper, people start re relinquishing their self control to other forces. Yeah, by the time it gets late, then things have really really changed. So my just my other additional point is that it is important to talk to your children about what happens in such gatherings mm -hmm. or what happens in social gatherings, what happens in, you know, all those kinds of things. Talk to them and, and just beyond that, talk to them about sex. Talk to them about uh, the things that are traps. Why do you need to talk to them about those things? So that when they meet those things, they know how to deal with those things. So as you give them the information about some of those things, you also tell them, so how do you, you know, how do you navigate some of those things? Do not allow them to find themselves in places where they 
Um, it's a it's a totally new environment. They've never heard about it, um, and then they don't know how to deal with it. Chances are, the person who has initiated it will have the upper hand. But if you have spoken about it, your children know about it, they'll know how to deal with it and navigate that kind of a, a situation. So for us, and I think in our own experience, just don't take them to those places. <laughs> it is as simple as that. Uh, I don't know what you're gaining by taking them to those places. There are many other beautiful places that you can take your children to and they will gain more. We have book clubs. We have fun places where they can go. You know, uh, you can go to Karura. You can go to two rivers. There are amusement parks everywhere. Um, take them to those places. It does not negate the, the the fact that in certain situations they might find themselves there. But when they find themselves there, they need to know how to to deal with, it. yeah, to navigate and to deal with it. Well, yeah. thank you so much. So that's a weight paint already. Yeah, yeah. And you must be very careful. The places that we expose our children, uh, they might not even speak or talk about what they have seen, but it remains on them. It becomes sure. a weight paint. Thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, I will allow any one person to interact. I have seen Mentor Ben. Maybe he can say hi. He's part of uh, this team. Uh, just maybe to say hi, and then from there, I think we are just going to um, close it down. Uh, Mentor Ben, please, if you are there, 